Praise the Lord. Amen. I can see all my children from Max in another shade of red that is very close to mine. I think we have dressed too much today. It makes me feel very comfortable today. Children will always be a blessing, especially when they are trained in institutions where Christ is supreme. My sister called me on Thursday and said to me, Pastor, we are in trouble in Britain. The auditorium where we worship is um, a public facility. Those are church buildings that any church can, you know, register or hire and you'll be meeting there. Usually it's for free. So she said the, a committee approached the leadership of the church and asked them, we want to ask you whether you will be supporting the, the drive to, you know, protect and promote homosexuals and the issues of business of homosexuality. If you can, fine, you will remain here. But if you think that when they display their colors and things here, you wouldn't like it while church service is going on, then you have to quit. So we've given the leadership two weeks. In a week's time, leadership called them back and said, we cannot promote that. We will not be part of it. It's against the word of our creator. So they were served a notice to quit, and now they have to look for a new place to worship. Even so, come Lord Jesus. So when I see children in Adventist schools, I see hope and I see a bright future. And whoever is promoting this business of having Adventist education in these areas, I pray that the Lord will bless you. I pray that the Lord will bless you. I want to thank the children for, for that wonderful song, Maps. I have a father. He calls me his own. He will never leave me alone. He knows my name. He knows every thought. He knows my every thought. He sees every tear that falls. He hears me when I call. Amen. And my dear young ones from this side also said, Jesus, you are a faithful friend. Nothing can separate me from you. What a sermon. Let us pray. Father divine, thank you so much. We have gathered together this morning that we may feast on your word. May thou, Lord, put on me that gown of humility that you may find me available to use as your mouthpiece to speak to all of us. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank my dear sister for taking time to read the text. She asked me in the vestry, Pastor, am I making a mistake? Am I supposed to read everything? I said, yes, you are supposed to read everything. And I'm even thinking of adding more. The fourth man. The fourth man. When the text was mentioned, the reference, Pastor Akali said, hey, Pastor, the fourth man, the fourth man. You know, when you hear a fourth man, 
many thoughts come into your mind, true or false. It could be that there is a woman who is going after men and now she is on the fourth man. So I think I put many of you, especially those who did not have time to read the text during the week, I, I, I put your minds in trouble, including my senior pastor. The fourth man, could it be that a fourth man is about to die? This morning, I want to introduce you to a fourth man that will make things easy for you in your life. I met that fourth man and I ensure that since that day when I met him, about 32 years ago, he always is my fourth man. The fourth man. This message is nothing but a message that is drawing our attention to a conflict over false worship. The stories in the book of Daniel are not bedtime stories. They are a forewarning to the Christians in the end time and describing what to expect if they would be faithful to Jesus. I want to draw your attention that in the end time, it is a fact that false worship will be enforced. True worship will be forbidden. That fact we must all know and accept. In the book of Daniel chapter 3, from the beginning, Verse 1, Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was three score cubit, cubits and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. King Nebuchadnezzar was the ruler of the then world, a powerful man that you dare not provoke. As a matter of fact, the image that he set up, which was in fact about 90 feet high and 9 feet wide, you could imagine, I am just about seven feet, two, I mean six feet, eight inches. And you can multiply just by imagining how high it will go and how wide nine feet it will be. Nebuchadnezzar was given the interpretation of a dream that he had. And the dream that he had was such that there were different parts of an image that he saw in the dream. The first part was a head of gold. And Daniel said, these parts that you are seeing represent kingdoms, one kingdom after the other, until the last part, which is the legs and the feet. And Daniel said, you, King Nebuchadnezzar, and your kingdom represent the head. The man said, wow. So there will be a kingdom after the kingdom of gold. Well, if a kingdom is coming after the kingdom of gold, then I will set up an image from the head 
to the toe. Gold. He was very smart. If it is gold from top to bottom, then it means my kingdom will continue forever and ever and ever. So the image was set up. Verse 2. Then King Nebuchadnezzar, the king, sent to gather together all the princes, all the governors, all the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Then the princes, the governors, the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the, the, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. You see, the, the phrase Nebuchadnezzar had set up keeps on being repeated just for the reader to understand that anyone and anybody who makes a move against the dedication of this image will face the madness of King Nebuchadnezzar. Then an herod cried out, an announcer, to you it is commanded all people, nation, and languages. Verse 5. That at what time you hear the sound of the cornet. May I have the pianist there? At the time you hear the sound of the cornet. Hmm. That's right. The flutes. The harp, the sack box. <laughs> this one was there during the time of Nebuchadnezzar. And by the way, take note of the sack box. What about the pastry? The dulcima <laughs> and all kinds of musical instruments. Yes, there you go, preacher. Now, let me tell you something. Let me begin from the end and do a little bit of application here. Things that will be alarming to Brother A may not be alarming to brother B. And there are things that may be happening in your sister's life that you may not even be aware of. Just take your time, Kidogo. Stop judging others. Because the things that are happening in somebody's life may not as yet be happening in your life. And that is why you may not even understand what a sack bat is and a pap tree is because they are not unique to your situation. You cannot yet identify yourself with. And so at the such time when you hear all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar hath 
set up. Verse 6. A warning. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth shall the same hour be cast into the burn into the mist of the burning fire refiners. Therefore, at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the pop stream, and all kinds of music, all to gul. Do you know that one? Are my countrymen here? Tugul. Do you know Tugul? Chemege. Missing Kararang. Ah, there is one there. Now I know that the Kalenjis are here. By the way, we are the best runners. And also, we cannot have enough flesh to look very nice. We have the legs and the stamina. And we win marathons. Hallelujah. Yes. I love Kenya. It's a country of diverse riches and cultures and talents. May God bless you. And whoso falleth not down and watch, I mean, and worshipeth, shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Therefore, at the time when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and the languages fell down and worshipped. They worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Somebody is going to set up an image of supremacy. Wherefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. The Jews were accused. They spake and said to the king in the book of Nazar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, every man that shall hear the sound of joblessness. Every woman that shall hear the sound of divorce. Every woman that shall hear the sound of a broken home. Every man that shall hear the sound of being fired from work. Every man that shall hear the sound of sickness shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, that he shall be cast into the midst of the burning furnace. Verse 12. There are certain Seventh-day Adventists. Not all of them. There are certain Seventh-day... I mean, are you reading from your Bibles? There are certain Christians whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. 
These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. <laughs> this law was a universal law. All people, tribe, nations. And it was an effort to unite church and state, religion and politics. And the penalty was death. This message this morning and the, and the narration and the condition of the three Hebrew boys represents the condition in which Christians, especially Sabbath keepers, will be at the time of the end. But the fourth man. When times are difficult, when you are not able to achieve your goals, you do not have money to pay your school fees. You have moved from the countryside into the city. And the only man at your workplace who is capable of assisting you, young woman, says, I am married, but if you can become my second wife, I will provide a three-bedroom apartment free of charge. Will you bow to the image of Nebuchadnezzar? Or you will stand and be accused by the Chaldeans. Verse 11, and whoso falleth not down and worshipeth not, that he should be cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set up. There are certain people. If seven day Adventists who are faithful to the core are being looked for and be imprisoned, I want to ask you, would you be found guilty? Would you be found guilty if a true, I mean, if worshiping God in truth and in spirit was a crime, would you be found guilty in the court of law? Or you will be assessed and according to the evidences of unfaithfulness, you will be discharged and set free, declared innocent. Verse 13. Then the book of Nazar in his rage and fury commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true? Hallelujah. Is it true? <laughs> Is it true? Oh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Is it true that you do not worship my gods nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now gods and golden image, let me explain something this morning. The golden image was erected publicly. The gods Privately, the question to the Hebrew boys, the question to those three seven-day Adventist 
faithful Sabbath keepers was, is it true that in public you do not bow to the golden image? And is it true that in your private life you are still faithful? Hello, somebody. For it is easy for some of us to display a public appearance of holiness. But in our private lives, we desecrate that same holiness, the righteousness of Christ. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage, verse 14, he also asked them, is it true? Verse 15, now, if you will be ready that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the pop strip, the dulcimer, he has even added one, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, that is okay. Sour, sour. If you will bow down, sour. Okay. <laughs> but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And who, listen, and who is that God? That shall deliver you out of my hands. The die is cast. <laughs> the battle has begun. Now, now, till I read this portion, I did not know why the, the three Adventists answered the king in the manner that they did. Verse 16. Shadrach Meshach and Abednego answered and said to the king, Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Nebuchadnezzar, don't expect that we will be diplomatic and nice in answering this particular matter. This one. No, apana, apana kabisa, apana tugul. We will not be diplomatic and we will not take our time to answer you this. We have the answer. When the young man has called you and said that this chemistry of, you know, is hunting him in his body. Do you love me? We are now dating, young woman. If you seriously love me, then let's go to bed as a proof. Will you take your time to answer? Or you will say, I have the answer. Not until we are married, we will not do that which God says married people should do. We will not be careful in this matter. Hallelujah. Now verse 17. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O oh, king. They said, King, wait a little bit. Our God is able to deliver us. Our God, our God is able to deliver us from your hands. The challenges are there. In the home, there is no peace. At work, there is no peace. At school, there is no peace. In the business, there is no peace. 
we are challenged to bow to the worldly golden image. King Nebuchadnezzar, our God is able. We just want you to know that we serve a miracle working God. And that he is able to deliver us. And he will deliver us. Now when they said this, Shadrach whispered to Abednego. said, I want to tell the king the other side of the story. Then Meshach said, if you do not tell him, I will do so. He said, no, wait. I'm the spokesperson here. <clears throat> king, we also want you to know. We also want you to know that if our God does not save us from your hand, be it known unto thee, verse 18, O King Nebuchadnezzar, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. King, we just want you to know, and we say this proudly, that we do not worship our God for salvation. We are not worshiping our God because he is able to provide chapati every morning. Our worship is not based on getting money, good salary, buying nice cars and building mansions. No, our worship is based on love and loyalty. Love and loyalty. That it is not well at workplace, but love and loyalty pushes me on. Love and loyalty. Some of you here, may I prophesy and withdraw this prophecy at the same time. That should you be fired from your workplaces on Monday morning, you will deny Jesus Christ seven times. But I have prayed for you. That even in your time of adversity, God will deliver you. Amen. Be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, rage, anger. And the form of his countenance, visage, was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When you take a stand for Christ, there is no guarantee other than the guarantee of disappointments. For the things of this world will not support the things of heaven, but the truth of God will still march on. Therefore, he spake and commanded that they should hit the furnace one seven times, seven more times than it was. Verse 20. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and put them into the fairy furnace. It was very hot. And he commanded the strong men, the strong men in the army, he just commanded them. He, he commanded them. Strong man. <laughs> he commanded the strong men. He commanded them. Nebuchadnezzar was dressed like a Ghanaian. <laughs> Can someone give me a chair from there? He commanded them. 
Nebuchadnezzar commanded commanded that go and bring them Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, those little tiny three boys from there. They said they are actually here. So they said they should bring them. They went. And the fire was set. I can see, you are seeing the fire. The fire is this side and it's burning, it's burning seven times. <laughs> the Bible says they were, they were all tied, hands and you know, and you know, feet. And they were pushed into the, into the, you know, burning fairy finance they were thrown inside of that and so now they are all down they are all down in the burning furnace now these mighty men that brought them and pushed them into this burning fairy furnace the bible says the heat was too much and so it killed all of them it killed all of them they all died It killed all of them. And now they are dead. All of them dead. While they were in the burning furnace. Pretend as if you are not seeing what is happening. You are only seeing the soldiers that are dead. And all of a sudden, God opened the eyes of King Nebuchadnezzar. And he called the other army officers. He called them. He called them. He called them. He called them. He called them them and said, hey, come here. Come here, come here, come, come, come. Was it not that three men were thrown into the burning fire furnace? Now I see a fourth man, and that fourth man is like the Son of God. Then he arose majestically. And because he did not want trouble, he did not want to die. He said, let me watch carefully. I cast three men, but there is a fourth man. And that fourth man looks like the son of God. And indeed, it was the son of God. In your adversity... In your time of trouble, the fourth man will be there. When the marriage is about to break, invite the fourth man. When your work is not doing well, invite the fourth man. When you are sick, invite the fourth man. When you cannot see your way through, invite the fourth man. For in the presence of Of the fourth man, victory is guaranteed. So the king called them out. They came out. They came out. And the king said, Good people, what happened? I see your hair is intact. I see even your braces are all intact. I see. The bow ties are there, your jersey, your shoes, nothing, nothing is wrong with you. The body they may kill, but the soul they cannot touch. The man of God, in the presence of the fourth man, were walking at peace, even in calamity. When you have the fourth man, you will display peace that no man will understand. When you have the fourth man, 
Joy comes naturally. Even when others think you are suffering, you are smiling and saying, praise the Lord. I pray this morning that God will be with you. I pray this morning that for all the things that you will look for on this earth, the fourth man will be your priority. How many of us are saying this morning and afternoon, God, we need the fourth man. Can you please stand on your feet? Even these people need the fourth man. They need the fourth man. Hallelujah. Now I want to ask of you a favor. That before you meet the fourth man, there must be a condition. He must know you. He must know you. I will not call anybody to come up front. But you know the situation in which you are. Please. If you know that he does not know you enough, this is the time to bow down your head and say, God, I want you to be my fourth man, but I first want you to know me. Bow down your head and pray. I hear the Savior sing Thy strength in this world Shall the weakness of Jesus paid it all, all to him I know, sin has left a crimson stain. Jesus made it all oh, oh, to him my own. Sing, heart let every song say, he was still right as Maybe. You have not yet been baptized, but you want God to identify you. You want to be known by God. As our eyes are closed, I will not call you forward here. Just raise up your hand, or if you are online, just check that baptismal card and say, Lord, I want to be baptized. If you are here, just show by the raise of your hand. All eyes are closed. May God bless you. May God bless you. May God bless you. Heavenly Father, your children are standing before you. Those in this big auditorium and those online worshiping with us. We pray together that please, please, may you identify us in your records. We want you to know us and we want to know you better. I pray that as the world prepares to also set up a golden image, the mark of the beast, that will force the entire world to worship the beast and his image on Sunday the Sabbath made by men and go against Saturday, the Sabbath made by God, blessed and sanctified. I pray this morning, Heavenly Father, please write our names in the book of life. 
And while we wait for your second coming, there will be challenges in this world. Now that you know us, you have known us, we pray this afternoon, dear Lord, and this morning, please be our defense. When there is difficulty in our lives, we need this fourth man. May the fourth man be with you in all situations. Dear Lord, be the fourth man. We don't need just any fourth man. We don't need a fourth man. We need the fourth man. Thank you for being our fourth man. We bless your name in Jesus' name. Amen. May you be seated.